Hello, everyone. I think it's time to start our talk. Anyone is here? Uh, thank you, all of you, for coming here or uh, listening us in this talk. It's really nice to see faces, not in virtual. And thank you, the organizer and the CNCA, for accepting our, our talk to be to be here. We are he to talk about how attackers use expose Prometheus and um, server to exploit Kubernetes cluster. My name is Miguel Hernández. I work as a security researcher for the last five years in different topics like uh, cloud security or uh, synthetic content to social engineer or also fraud detection. And I work with David de Torres, he's manager of Prometheus team at SISDI. And we're here to try to explain this mem. It's like we put more and more layers, more and more uh, software, uh, but if you fail in one point, everything is broken. And with that is the post matrix. Okay, it's a typical insecurity. It's very typical to, to talk about this, but I think repeat and again and again and again in, in the next in the next time. Well, I lost. Well, uh, the first thing to mention here is the disclaimer. Uh, we don't like to release any new vulnerability or CVE to Kubernetes or Prometheus. Here is for common sense to uh, educational purpose, and we don't like to uh, provoke any attack for real uh, customers. And also, we uh, recommend to follow always the security best practices in Kubernetes and also to use Prometheus to monitor everything. But please don't open the door to the attackers or expose your. Uh, credential for free because it's very easy if you are an attacker to, to get to get access. Uh, why is important or why someone likes to do Kubernetes fingerprinting? Well, if you are a pen testing or ethical hacking or you work in security, the first thing to do is when you have a target is to gather all the information as you can. Okay, you need this information to choose the best tool, the best technique to get access or exploit the, these things. And it's normal to match with CVEs or known vulnerabilities with the exactly tool, and you get access. It's the first step to initial access. You need to gather information. And we try to explain in this talk is possible with the metrics of uh, Prometheus to gather this information and create the plan to, to attack a, a cluster of Kubernetes. And this is not, not, it's not something new. If in the past, uh, this problem with uh, Tesla is forced because expose a Kubernetes dashboard. It's something, I don't know. You, you like to protect everything, and you follow the security practices, and you, uh, I don't know, use a lot of uh, security techniques or uh, um, application. If you expose your credential, in clear text, doesn't matter everything. You, uh, that you access for free to your cloud uh, provider and start to crypto mining, for example, but it's one example of the things you can do. And I like to remark this because in Spain, Napoleon Bonaparte said this, aquel que no conoce la historia está condenado a repetirla. If you, if you work in the uh, incident response team or digital forensics, the, fair, the most important thing to, to do when you create the report is to, to know what happened with this, when, 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 uh, in, in an incident. And you need to learn from the past to don't repeat and again in the future. And this is important because what happened with Prometheus? You expose again and leak the credential or not? Well, uh, also, we like to mention that this is not the first thing or the first uh, guys that uh, talk about this. If you do a quick uh, search in Google, you can see an issue from this uh, shop that discuss this, this same topic. It's like uh, if you use Prometheus and expose the, the dashboard, you see a leak or credential, or you have a problem in the future or not. Also, JFrog uh, uh, write this amazing uh, article about this problem, but more focus on the secrets, not in the pivoting on gathering information. But this is really nice. And, uh, finally, we are not the first speakers talking about hacking monitoring. This is something that is uh, cool, but uh, as I mentioned before, the story repeat and repeat, and they, it doesn't matter if you explain once, uh, two, it doesn't matter. 
Um, the first thing to do is, uh, is uh, a real scenario to uh, access to a Prometheus exposed to the internet. Well, you need to configure. It's not by default the dashboard open to the world, but uh, the configuration is not enabled. And if you configure the dashboard, ensure you uh, uh, configure the authentication, or it's free to the attackers to make queries or access to the Pro uh, Prometheus metrics. And if you do a simple do Google dorking, you can see some uh, several results with uh, real Prometheus server exposed. And also, if you are in different security conferences, this is very typical. Use other search en engines like Sodan, Tensys, or FOFA to see if the impact is a real impact because uh, there are a lot of servers exposed or not. With Sodan, it's more simple because you use to filter the, the Favicon, but as you can see, uh, a lot of servers are exposed. With this introduction, I'd like to share the hands to my friend and, exp and explain everything. Well, first of all, I'm just clear this is not a live hacking session, so I was talking about hacking securities that do not enter unknown PC servers, which are all open servers, and so on. Sorry, you're a good job. We will use the presentation from why we use this for first time. Well, it's closer to the day. Please stay in there, it's closer. I'll do some of the introduction, okay? We are going to go to the Prometheus search for the Prometheus, but we will be there to test the information. Okay. We are a hacker, and you guys know that there is an open web service, maybe it's a web page, and we know that there is something there. But we don't know where it is, we don't know where it is. So, the account are not on the patient's business. But we have a lot of communities, so let's start looking for where we can go. This is a major exposed by a lot of software. If it's not a store, you might have a store info. And if it's a lot of information, it's not know. It can give us videos, it give us information about it, even the chassis sometimes, or the board vendor. But most important, it is giving us information about the system vendor and the product name. So we knowing which um, cloud provider it is. So we are starting to have some information. We know that after behind this example.com web page, we know that the, maybe it is uh, AWS or uh, iShare or some. We, we know already what is the provider. And we are starting to add things to our map. This will be our map that we will use later on to make a route for attacking, okay? We can have more information. This is another node exporter metric called node underscore network underscore info. And we can filter by all the label device uh, like Ethernet. So we have all the physical interfaces of the machine. And this is giving us some important information, like not only the physical address of the node, but also the availability zone of the service provider and the VPC. So we will have also information. Also, these are from the state metrics supporter. We have also information about the host name with the cube underscore node underscore info. We can even make some black magic with PromQL to filter all the service of the kind load balancer. As you know, these load balancer services are the one that the service provider implement behind something to expose to the public. And we can also have information about the ingresses that we have. This is interesting because the ingresses are telling us which uh, reverse proxy we are attacking. If we are attacking slash API slash card DB slash product, it goes to one service in the cluster. And if we're going to a slash catalog slash ID, we are going to another service in the cluster. So we are starting to make a map of networking inside the cluster. We are starting to have more information now. We are actually starting to make 
the most important thing is just the rules of attack. We know that behind this uh, example.com slash API slash whatever, it goes to a ingress, and that ingress go to a service, and the service go to a pod. And we can do this with different endpoints of the API. We have also information about the nodes and even the name spaces. And we are starting to add new things to our map. But let's go further. With KSM, we can have the name spaces, we can have the workloads, the deployment, the stateful sets, even the pods, the container inside the pods. So we are starting to have real information of what are the names of the applications, what are the name of the workloads that we have, what are the name of the containers, what are the name of the cron jobs that are being executed. And this is giving us a real map of what is behind, but not only of the user workloads. As we can see in this uh, metric, this is from the Kubernetes uh, uh, components metrics that they expose natively. We have the Kubernetes underscore build underscore info. And this is giving us information on the version, exact version, not only major, minor, even the git commit and the build date of each of the components on the Kubernetes control plane. And this is important because now we are having more information, but we can start to add now vulnerabilities for the component, uh, components of the control plane. We cannot access that now, but we are starting to add more things to the map. Let's change the dimension. We are talking about Kubernetes, but let's talk what is behind the machine. We can have information about both the image that the uh, node is running and the kernel version. And this is important because we are adding more known vulnerabilities, not only of the Kubernetes cluster, but also from both the kernel version and the image of the operative system that it's using. Let's go further. Let's go for applications. We are having uh, qubit state metrics is giving us information about the image and the tag of the containers running in the uh, cluster. So we know which image it is running, which tag they are using, which hash it is, and even we know also the registry that they are using. If we even want more information, some applications, they are even exposing the more uh, specific information about the version or even the configuration options in some custom metrics like Prometheus underscore build underscore info. And now where it is when it's starting to get interesting because we are adding even more non vulnerabilities for each application that we can find in the cluster. And last but not least, we are also having information about the secrets. You might say, okay, you only know the name of the secret. Yes, but we are also having information about the annotations and the content of the annotations of the secrets. Why this is important? I don't know if you know that in some versions of kubectl, kubectl was adding an annotation of the current uh, applied configuration that was exposing in plain text directly the content of the secret. So all the roles and all the role bindings to service accounts was no sense because the content of the secrets was being exposed directly in your KSM Prometheus metric. So we already have a lot of information and we already have a nice map of the cluster that we want to attack. And do you know, do you want to know something funny? We gather all this information, most probably without no one noticing, because Prometheus has the capacity of logging all the queries made by the API and by the front end, but unfortunately, this is disabled by default. And 
you can even check if this is disabled or enabled with this metric like Prometheus underscore engine underscore query underscore log underscore enable. If this is a zero, we are in ninja mode and no one realized and no one locked anything that we did to gather all this information. But I'm not the hacker one. I'm just the Prometheus guy and I will call now my friend from the secure part. <laughs> Miguel, I will... You drive okay. from here? Okay, see. Next thing to do. Okay, we have all this information. It's uh, quite simple to make queries, gather all the information, map everything, and you don't know. You don't need to initial access to know if these components are vulnerable or not, if you can escape or not, because you have the information yet. All right. um, we like to expose three different examples on how this is possible, or this fictitious, but not really. It's possible uh, to. Uh, achieve the goal of the attacker. It's like, I like to leak data, or I like to crypto mine, or I like uh, ransomware. It depends on the goal. You use one or other techniques, or you can perform different paths to get the access. And I think it's uh, interesting to see what happens with the, all this information. The first uh, scenario is with leak data. Okay, this is an example of a real scenario, okay? Everything is fine. We follow the security best practices. We don't have any CVEs uh, or known CVEs in any of this part. We, the Kubernetes um, components are fine. The node are fine. The application are fine. And we have an API to make queries. And, but I like to leak the data inside without authorization. The first thing to do is to use, for example, a SQL map to try to do some injection in the API. And it's possible to do or not. It depends. But in case of you can't, the next step is, well, I know what is the registry, if it's third party or, or private. I know the images. And I can perform some social engineer to get access to a third party registry, for example. Because I like to upload a malicious images in the continuum delivery to get access. Because the other way is impossible to initial access. In some cases, or some scenarios, we craft the the imaging with a vulnerability to get access and perform the other steps to elevate privilege or something like that. But in this case, you need to focus on the supply chain. Because the other way, you need to, I don't know, zero days or something like that. But in this case, we need to, to do by uh, supply chain attacks. And you can use, I don't know, beef to create a phishing attack, or you can do something similar to tipo squatting to upload a new uh, container with similar names, I don't know. But this is uh, the first uh, scenario. The next one is possible to be uh, realistic or not. You have an uh, application, and you know via Prometheus that the ingress send the command to an uh, application that is vulnerable to Log4j. And you have the initial access, and you know uh, you are inside a container, but this container also have a uh, a vulnerability in the node that uh, allow the elevated privilege. So what is the, uh, the goal in this scenario, the crypto mining? You like the AWS credential. And you need to do these steps to get access to the node and following the, uh, or seeing the config files or in the environmental um, variables if the AWS key or the cloud provider key are in this place. Like the example of Kubernetes dashboard. It's in clear test. In this, place, in this case, we need to do these steps. This is a long path. If you like to do very short, you can do the same example with Kubernetes. It's possible if you use AWS and you configure your secrets, it's exposed by default in the dashboard, and you make the query and get access to the credential, and it's fine. You don't need to do you don't need to perform any initial access or any other steps because it's in clear. Okay? This is an example that is in the documentation. Please be careful if you expose the Prometheus. It's possible that expose your secrets and it's something uh, known for the, for the community. And again, don't open the door. Okay? And finally, another scenario, ransomware is a bit strange in, in uh, Kubernetes. Cluster is more for traditional uh, environment or database that you uh, cipher the data and ask for a rescue. 
And in this example, it's a bit different. You know, uh, an application has a vulnerability, and the initial access is via Spring Cloud. You can inject a, a command via HTTP and access to the, to the container. And also, you detect with Prometheus that a one component are vulnerable, a one CV, and you can use to uh, change the namespace or get access to the secrets and access to the data in the database. The problem here is to ask for the money. But, okay, I don't like to, to give any advice or <laughs> anything to know how it's possible to ask for the money in this case because you need uh, something to, uh, I don't know, deploy a pod with user interface or something like that. Uh, but it's something similar. You get the information from Prometheus and prepare the journey to, to get access. Okay. This is a summary of the th these three attacks or three uh, scenarios. And I like to summary that is for security, it's important to protect all the information you are exposed. Okay? That doesn't matter if it's a metric or it's a credential or it's a server application, I don't know. But it's important because in security, it's a long battle. It's red team versus blue team, and all the time we are fighting uh, or cat and dogs. Uh, it's uh, different ideas, no? but a long battle. If you expose your credential or you expose your Prometheus or expose um, the dashboard, you change to a speed run. Okay? It's very simple. And we like to finish with a normal recommendation in each step. Okay? All this talk is about well, follow the security practices in Kubernetes, follow the security practices in in the code, in the deployment, you have these layers, and sometimes we forget the metrics and the security metrics. In this talk, we don't like to explain uh, any vulnerability to Prometheus itself because it's not the, the scope, but it's also uh, something to, to keep in mind, and we like to, to share this, uh, this recommendation. And I think that's all. Thank you so much. If you have any questions. <laughs>